I'd like to talk here about surface uh, radiation balance. The main point is that the uh, radiation balance at the Earth's surface, soil surface, drives the hydrologic cycle, and it is, of course, uh, a key component of uh, the climate. There are some subtle differences between shortwave and longwave radiation uh, in terms of their behavior at surfaces that I'll explain as we formulate the radiation balance. So the solar radiation arriving to the Earth's atmosphere undergoes various interactions. Uh, some of them will modify its properties. Generally speaking, about 30% of the incoming radiation will be reflected back to space, either by clouds, uh, from surfaces, by the atmosphere itself. And only 40 to 70% of the terrestrial solar constant arrives to the, uh, to the Earth's surface. It depends, we say 40 to 70, because it really depends on the cloud cover at any particular t uh, point in time and, and space. So when we uh, look at the, uh, uh, what happens at the surface, say at the Earth's or soil surface, we would like to estimate how much net radiation we have on the surface. And uh, to construct that, we basically do the balance between the incoming uh, shortwave radiation, outgoing uh, shortwave radiation, reflected shortwave radiation. And the same thing, we do a balance between the incoming longwave radiation and the outgoing longwave radiation. So we separate these two components because they behave differently in the interaction with the surface. The shortwave radiation could be reflected, uh, and it is relatively easy to, uh, to express the fraction, of re uh, the fraction of the energy reflected. The longwave radiation is still a bit um, trickier because it interacts with only the very few microns of the surface, and it is mostly sensitive to the temperature of the surface and the temperature of the atmosphere above that surface. So to formulate the radiation balance or to estimate the net radiation, uh, we basically take the shortwave radiation, just whatever we measure uh, coming from the, say, solar radiation, uh, multiply it by 1 minus the reflectivity or the albedo of that surface. I'll uh, give you on the next slide a few um, numbers so you can develop a sense for that uh, albedo. Plus, we'll calculate the whatever net, the difference between the incoming and outgoing longwave radiation, and keep in mind that this number could be negative. Uh, there'll be times in which the surface will be warmer than the atmosphere, and the, uh, the outgoing uh, longwave radiation will be uh, larger than the incoming longwave radiation. Okay? So we basically, to avoid confusion, we provide uh, an arrow with this, uh, with this component of the radiation balance. So the long wave radiation will calculate the sky radiation impinging on the surface minus the uh, long wave radiation emitted from the soil surface, primarily defined by its own temperature. So what are the values of albedo that I mentioned? Um, the whiter the surface, if you wish, the higher the albedo. So fresh, dry snow will have an albedo of 0.8, or 0.9, in other words, 90% of the shortwave radiation on this uh, snow will be reflected back to the atmosphere. That's why you need to uh, have uh, sunglasses when you do uh, ski touring on in a bright day. Uh, whereas deep water will have a very low albedo, about, uh, say, only 5% of the shortwave radiation will be reflected back from a deep water. As soils will fall somewhere in between, between 10 and 20 percent of the radiation will be reflected back to the atmosphere. So this is about this quantity albedo. You can look at it also globally and you'll see that the albedo, see here on this axis expressed in percentages, varies roughly about 10 percent up to latitude of 60 degrees and then shoots up. Why does it shoot up, do you think? Well, the answer is that we're getting to the polar region in which we have more and more snow on the surfaces. And in fact, this uh, image from NASA of albedo basically uh, shows it nicely. You can see the high albedos here in the northern latitude, and you can more or less guess what time of year this image was taken. It was taken in January. So you can see that there is a distribution of albedo globally, uh, as this uh, color diagram shows here, with 80% uh, being the red. How do we measure solar radiation? Every water station will have some measure of solar radiation. The best would be to measure the four component, 
uh, this two will measure the, the reflected uh, long wave and the incoming long wave. Uh, this will measure the incoming short wave and the reflected short wave. So we have these four components of the radiation balance that can be measured and verified uh, in place. The uh, radiation balance that I mentioned here is, and the net radiation we calculate from it, is the entry point for the more uh, 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 energy balance that we'll elaborate more about it, in which this radiative energy goes to evaporation, heating up the air, or heating up the soil. So to summarize, surface properties affect how much of the radiative energy remains and how much is reflected. The surface net radiation drives the surface energy balance, which is the core of land-atmosphere interactions and the hydrology. Just, I would like to uh, leave you with a bit of a uh, puzzle here. Because water is transparent to short-wave radiation, whereas long-wave radiation is not, in other words, long-wave radiation will always be absorbed in the first few microns, uh, what do you think the surface radiation balance that we formulated for, for water surface, for uh, uh, terrestrial surfaces would look like over the ocean?